Okay, so what I thought I'll do today is I'll cover some of the topics that I think are fundamental and important for all of us to have in order to have a good strong base and go on to become a good fencer. I kind of broke them out into a couple of parts. Um, so first, I'll start, uh, I, in the past I used to start with, have this for last, I'll try to do it first and we'll just do it short and quick. So fitness aspect for fencing, okay? Um, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. It's a combination, what we have, we have a mixture of aerobic and anaerobic sport, meaning that there's periods, relatively prolonged periods where you need endurance, which would be the aerobic part, right? And there's, in there, we have a mixture, a small burst of anaerobic activities, little bursts, right, which is your explosive power. So, to keep in mind when we're training for fencing, in general throughout the year, you have to keep track of both. So a good example would be like a, going to a knack. That's especially something that's uh, very, I guess, something that we come across very often, right? Winning a knack is not necessarily how good of a fencer you are. Like you might have great technique and everything, but because the DEs start at like 256, Right, you have so much fencing going on. You're looking at 500 fencers, well, pre-COVID, now maybe a little less. So it's a little bit of a game of endurance, right? So when you're preparing throughout practice, you should be thinking about, okay, did I get my endurance targets, so, right? So you should be kind of, they could be quantitative targets, so you could write down on a piece of paper that, okay, I gotta make sure I put down at least 30 minutes of kind of like intensive endurance practice, right? So where of pure actual time. So when you're on a strip, you fence in, let's say in the practice in two hours, you get to fence, let's say 15 people. Well, if you end up beating all of them 15, eight, that means half the bout was really not training you for that intensive endurance that I'm talking about, right? So you really can only count the first, whatever, seven minutes or whatever it took you to get that lead. So you have to make sure you have that. Or just in general by feel, qualitative, so you, you know how it feels when you're exhausted. So you probably want to get yourself just to a pre-level of exhaustion and see if you could coast out for some period of time, right? So in practice, you should plan out your bouts, right? When I would come into practice, even nowadays, like, and it's normal, like if you haven't fenced any bouts yet, you're probably going to look to find a fencer that's a little weaker than you are, so you know, you get your rhythm going. And that's kind of idea. So then somewhere in the middle of the practice, in the latter end of the practice, you may be looking for opponents that are now ready to, you know, do a training bout. Where they, you maybe already have fenced them earlier, but now you're just going to, you know, take it a little bit more serious and develop some endurance that way. Now in terms of anaerobic, uh, that's our explosive power. That's something that you do prior to practice or maybe after practice, although if we're purely looking at explosive aspect and get better, you probably should do it prior before your muscles are tired. So if you wanna, for example, have a more explosive, faster flesh, consider doing that type of training prior to your endurance training. So you, that, that way we can get the maximum output from our legs. Same thing if you wanna develop a quicker step lunge or just a lunge in general or a quick uh, change of directions, hop in and out you consider doing any type of plyometrics. So that's box jumps, uh, skipping ropes. Uh, your job for all of that is not to do it for a long period of time, but short bursts, up to maybe 15, 20 seconds, but high intensity, right? So that's from a fitness aspect, that's how you should structure your practice. So if you come in, you obviously should get a good dynamic warm up. maybe put in a little bit of plyometrics now that your muscles are all warmed up and then look into your maybe technical, tactical aspects such as a lesson, and when you go fence, you structure what you do, right? And also, of course, mix in what you learn in the lesson, which we'll cover a little later. Um, two other important aspects to fitness that I wanted to mention. Uh, one, the most obvious one is, we gotta train for injury prevention, okay? So we have to identify in our sport what are some of the most common injuries that will apply to everyone. Plus, you have to look inside of yourself, look 
if you've been fencing for several years, you're going to you're going to have some sort of track record where your weak spots. So you obviously have to focus on maintaining those areas and building up strength in them. Okay, so in terms of injury prevention, some of the things that could affect us. Any issues with our forearms, so like tennis elbow, muscular strains around here, uh, ankles, knees, lower back, right? Some people maybe will have some shoulder injuries, but those are predominantly the most uh, common ones. So those are covered quite easily with just your own body weight exercises. So anything for the knees, we're looking about no weights, just simple uh, like athletic lunges, squats, uh, transference of weight from leg to leg, balance drills. Uh, when we get into all the balances, your lower back is beginning to work. So all of these kind of uh, not super high impact drills are perfect for maintaining your body, not to get injured at the worst times, right? Which is when usually they occur. Injuries always occur at the worst possible times because that's when you're going a little too hard, not giving yourself a little enough rest, not prepping your body through it. Which, the last part that I want to mention, because we could do a deep dive on fitness, but that's not why we're here. Uh, strength building. Uh, so I feel like there is a big myth, especially around a lot of older coaches in our fencing world, that you shouldn't necessarily weight train or necessarily build strength. Um, I don't agree with it. There is several ways of proving it, which I'm not necessarily going to get into it. But strength, Regardless, is important. It's not necessarily hypertrophy, not necessarily always trying to bulk up and build muscle, although that's the biggest fear for most people. Uh, something first that I want to make clear, if you are a fencer at heart, but you work out in the gym, you're going to develop strength for fencing. If you're a bodybuilder at heart that does fencing as a hobby and you work out in the gym, you're going to look to develop more like a bodybuilder because you, your lifestyle will be more adhering to that. So if you work out in the gym, even if you lift weights, you won't necessarily end up looking and be immobile, which is the biggest argument against it. Now, in terms of weight training specifically, for all of your, everybody that's maybe 15 and younger, you shouldn't necessarily touch the weights unless you're with a professional and you've been taught how to do it and somebody's spotting you and teaching you correctly because weights could give you injuries. Uh, for everybody that's a little bit older, if you've never been taught this stuff, don't do it. Go on YouTube, try to learn it, ask somebody professional. But weight training is quite important. Something that's very important for all of us fencers is building our back. You gotta have a strong back. It's uh, not necessarily to have the ability to have lots of strength to move opponent left and right, but to have strong base. You want to be kind of like a statue. In a lot of situations, if you could just turn static like a stone, not that you should arm it be like a stone, but your whole body and just be a movable object, then it's going to act like a strong, I don't know, like a, a beam into your opponent that will be able to destroy a lot of their prep. So that's something that's very important. Okay? So that was fitness. Uh, does anybody have any questions or suggestions? What do they do for fitness that they find that works for them? Perfect, just like a thought. <laughs>